Once Upon This Guy Item Number 8762 Level 5 Top Secret Object Class Thaumiel Special Containment Procedures SCP-8762 is to be housed in a standard humanoid containment chamber. Footnote Modified in a way most commonly compared to baby proofing. Positioned centrally among several high maintenance anomalies to weaken or nullify their effects. SCP 8762 is permitted to request activities to maintain its morale. However, any activities posing potential harm to SCP 8762 are to be denied. Description SCP 8762 is a middle aged man of indeterminate age who identifies himself as Steve. Footnote, SCP-8762 has responded to a variety of names, including, but not limited to, Hubert, Larry, John, Bob, and Juggletron. No records of SCP-8762 exist in any known country, region, or sovereign state. Physically, SCP-8762 is non-anomalous, and has the same physiological requirements as typical humans. SCP-8762 has one noticeable, yet extremely potent anomalous effect. Whenever SCP-8762 is within close proximity of any anomalous location or object, their abilities will temporarily cease. The reason behind this is currently unknown. Anomalous personnel will remain conscious, although any abilities will cease until SCP-8762 exits the anomaly's proximity. SCP-8762 must be awake, conscious, and in a healthy mental state for this to occur. Footnote: Although entering REM sleep doesn't negate this effect, medically induced comas appear to do so. SCP-8762 was first discovered at Site-1. Camera footage showed SCP-8762 wandering through the hallways for 15 minutes, appearing extremely confused. After being noticed by several security guards, SCP-8762 was detained and interviewed. Extensive testing revealed that SCP-8762 was not associated with any known group of interest. SCP-8762 emits no humes, Akiva radiation, or any forms of anomalous energy, thereby eliminating the possibility of it being a weapon. After it temporarily neutralized SCP-1, it was designated as SCP-8762. Below is an interview log between SCP-8762 and Foundation Researcher Elizabeth Carter. Interviewer, Dr. Elizabeth Carter. Interviewee, SCP-8762. Begin log. Good afternoon, Steve. Hope everything is going well with you. It's going. Excellent. I'm going to ask you a few things if that's alright with you. Need to learn a bit about you and whatnot. Go ahead. Can you tell me about your background? Where are you from? No clue. Pardon? Just woke up here, really. You don't remember anything about your past? Family, friends, occupation? No. Sorry. SCP-8762 picks its nose looking around the room for a moment. Let's discuss your daily routine. What do you usually do during the day? I wake up, have breakfast, walk around a bit, maybe read a book or watch TV. Then I have lunch, walk around some more, have dinner. And? Then I go to bed. So you don't remember anything before appearing? Seems so. But you do have a plan for every day, despite the fact that you don't remember why you're here, or anything. Just what comes to mind when you mention it. Can't really remember doing that. I see. Do you have any hobbies? Interests? Not really. I just do normal things. What exactly are normal things? Watching TV, mainly. What do you watch? Movies? Any shows? The Weather Channel. 
Dr. Carter clenches her fists around her pen. SCP-8762 does not notice. How do you feel about not having any history or memories prior to your appearance here? For all that we know, you could have a family searching for you, or maybe a big career, or... I guess it's a bit strange, but I don't think about it much. And if we were to ask you to stay here for an extended period, how would you feel about that? Don't have anywhere else to be. End log. Following confirmation of SCP-8762's anomalous traits, it was exposed to several minor anomalies to test the limits of its abilities. Test 1. Anomaly. SCP-6161, a cake knife that causes all cut objects to become cake. Results. SCP-8762 used SCP-6161 on various items, all resulting in nothing remarkable. He frowned, proclaiming that, You promised me cake. This is a knife. Test 5. Anomaly. SCP-8022, a clay brick. Whenever it strikes an individual, they will vividly dream. Individuals hurt by SCP-8022 sustain trauma typical of being hit by a brick. Results. Testing halted per O5 order. Test 8. Anomaly. SCP-609. A growing collection of identical green billiard balls, capable of being moved telepathically. Results. SCP-8762 is requested to attempt to move SCP-609. Upon attempting for several minutes, footnote. During this time, SCP-8762 held out its hands and loudly grunted, sweating and growing red. It responded, exhausted. That's enough thinking for now. Test 11. Anomaly. SCP-113. A small gemstone capable of causing anyone who touches it to swap biological sexes. Results. Results pending. SCP-8762's sex is currently unknown, as all biological scans give mixed results. When asked, it replied with, I'm John. Test 13. Anomaly. SCP-6914. A small sign that says, Keep off grass. If individuals step on grass located near SCP-6914, they will then be struck by lightning. Results SCP-8762 proceeded to step on the grass with no issues, although later stated that it felt a bit inconsiderate. Test 44 Anomaly SCP-173 Results Initially, SCP-8762 stood within the same room as SCP-173 and did not report any findings. Shortly afterwards, however, personnel report a mild swelling in SCP-8762's face, which it attributed to a mild peanut allergy. But note, SCP-8762 had no known allergies, nor has it eaten any peanuts. Moments later, SCP-8762 spontaneously combusted. Following its untimely death, personnel discovered that its remains still shared the same properties as the anomaly itself. Lead theory suggests that SCP-8762 absorbed the properties of other anomalies. Because of this, smaller fragments of it are still capable of weakening anomalous effects. Following research, a new, revised file for SCP-8762 is available below. View revision. Description. SCP-8762 is the prototype known as the Scranton Reality Anchor. <laughs>